Good Wednesday morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and thank you for coming together again today to share from God's Word with me as we go through the thought for the day, which we often call uh, one chapter a day through the Bible, God's Holy Word. And today I go through Numbers chapter 10 as I was going through this chapter of the Bible this morning. Beginning in verse 11, it speaks about the Israelites departing from Sinai. And I was thinking about how in life sometimes we too have to depart um, from people, places, and things in our own life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in Mark, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, we, would, we are told that he told his disciples who were fishermen to lay down their nets, to stop working as fishermen and come follow him. Christ would tell us in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, anyone who puts their hands on the plow and looks back is not worthy for the kingdom of God. Back in ancient times, men would plow a field with horses or other animals, and they had to keep looking forward because if they looked back at what was done, the horses or those animals would go side to side and make their work even harder. In Genesis 18 and 19, we read of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Christ reminded us in Luke chapter 19, verse 32, I mean, Luke chapter 17, verse 32, to remember Lot's wife. What happened to Lot's wife? Well, she looked back at Sodom and Gomorrah instead of going forward, looking forward, because her affections were too much with this world. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, reminds us that he pressed forward, forgetting what was behind, he pressed forward for the higher calling in Christ Jesus. Sadly, oftentimes, we want to look back and think of the good old days. Well, according to the Bible, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10, there weren't no good old days. Anybody says the good old days, it says in that passage of Scripture in Ecclesiastes, is not being wise. We look at what we're going through in life right now and pain and the suffering, and we think, oh, I wish I could go back to days where things were different. Well, if you really look back in your past, Apart from our conversion to Jesus Christ and the life that God has given us, there's always been pain and suffering. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 reminds us there's nothing new under the sun. As followers of Christ, my friends, we ought to be pressing forward, living for God more and more, setting aside the things behind us. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 reminds us that we ought to look to Jesus Christ the author and finisher of our faith, laying aside the sins that easily beset us. One thing you can look back at your past and you can see, or even today, sins that easily beset you. What things is God asking you to leave behind? Just as the Israelites were told to leave Sinai, depart from Sinai, God calls us to depart from sin more and more each day, becoming more and more sanctified and holy. The sins that I struggle with growing up, maybe you didn't struggle with. But even though we might be on different battlefields, it's the same war. It's the flesh, the flesh, it's the world, it's the devil. Oftentimes I like to call that the trinity of evil. The flesh, the devil, and the world. Christ would tell us in the Gospel of Mark chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. What is it profit a man to gain the world and yet forfeit their soul? You see, my friends, we're called to die to ourselves. We're called to die to the things of this world. Not to keep living for these things of this world. Not to look back at what we accomplished and what we did. Not look back at all the trials and pain and suffering we might have gone through as children. And I get it. I sympathize. Because the scriptures do tell us in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way they should go when they're young. And when they depart, they won't depart from that way. Things that happen to us when we're young, trauma, um, abuse, addictions, can affect us when we're older. I know of people that, are still, that I knew from many years ago that go back to drugs, they go back to alcohol, guys from the street. It's an ongoing battle. I remember when I was in the 12-step program many years ago, they used to say, once an addict, always an addict. Now, by the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, we could come overcome our addictions, whether it's food, whether it's 
sex, pornography, drugs, alcohol. Ultimately, what we're addicted to is ourselves. And we have to let go of that and put on the Lord. The more and more we draw closer to God, the less and less we will want of ourselves. John the Baptist said that in John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase and I must decrease. John the Baptist was a powerful preacher, but the time had come for him to be imprisoned by Herod. He knew his ministry was going to be weakened and, and Christ was coming to get baptized by him and he must become more and more. And that's the same with us. Less and less of ourselves and more and more of God. I hope today's devotional video will also remind us, my brothers and sisters, that we need to take accountability for the things we've done in the past. We live in a culture today, especially here in America, a victim mentality culture, where people want reparations, people want things for things done to them in the past. We're told in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, Christ after the Our, uh, the Our Father prayer, he said, forgive those who have offended you and hurted you. If you don't forgive others, God, our Heavenly Father, will not forgive you. We have to let go of the past. We also have to take accountability. James chapter 1 verse 14 reminds us that when we sin, we sin because of the desires within our own heart. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, we read in verse 12, Adam started to blame his wife Eve. And then right after that, Eve started to blame the devil. I remember growing up, there was a comedian in the 70s called Flip Wilson. I was a young kid at the time, but he used to say, the devil made me do it whenever he did something crazy or weird. And we laughed at it, but we need to be serious about sin. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23 in the scriptures, it tells us that our sin will find us out. When I was young, I did some boxing and karate, get into the ring. A lot of times people try to run away from a powerful, strong fighter that hit hard. Joe Lewis, was called the Brown Bomber. He was a great heavyweight champion during the 1930s and 1940s. He said about his opponents, they can run, but they can't hide. And it's the same thing with us, with God. Oftentimes we try to hide our sins. Oftentimes we try to cover them up. God sees everything, my friends. You can't pull the wool over God's eyes. There's no drapes, there's no curtains big enough in a hotel room window to cover up what you're doing what you're saying, what you feel in your heart. God examines the heart. He searches your heart. When we live today in a day of so much bitterness and anger, resentment, so much division, oftentimes these things happen because of pride. It's all about me. Another trinity of evil, as I said before, is the world, the flesh, and the devil. Well, another trinity of evil is me, myself, and I. When everything is about you, what that does is, with that pride, will cause people to come against you. But when you're humble, when you confess your sins before God, when you confess your sins before other people, James chapter 5, verse 16 tells us that, confess your faults one to another, for the effectual reverent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That effective prayer is when you confess your sins to others, admit where you're wrong. And if they don't want to admit where they were wrong, that's between them and God. But get right with God for yourself. My friends today, be strong in the Lord. We're living in days that are evil. But we have a God we serve who's on the throne. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ to see this devotional video today. Lord, how many times in my own life I wanted to be the victim, play the victim card for things done to me when I was young. Let us remember, Lord God, that we are all accountable to you. Father God, that you see everything that we do. Help us to, this day, confess our sins to you. Convict us with your Holy Spirit. And may we depart from the things of this world more and more as the Israelites departed from Sinai. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.